the ongoing removal of a monument dedicated to reconciling the country in the wake of the Civil War that has been at uh, uh, Arlington National Cemetery now for over a century. The Biden administration is trying to delete it. They want to remove it entirely. Uh, but they were stopped today, Monday, by a judge who is concerned and thinks that a lawsuit may have some validity that uh, that the the removal process is going to damage the grave sites around the monument. Those grave sites are for uh, f Confederate soldiers who are buried there at Arlington. For more on this issue, I want to bring in a guy who's been following it uh, really closely, talking about it a great deal. John Reed is here. He's the host of Richmond's Morning News with John Reed on WRVA up there. Uh, John, good to have you with us, sir. Hey, Vince. Thanks very much for having me. Yes, sir. So so what are your thoughts on all of this as the Biden administration tries to remove this monument? Well, I was like you. I really thought by the time you and I spoke this afternoon that the monument would be in pieces and would be on a flatbed truck being trucked off to who knows where, like all these other monuments and artistic uh, endeavors. But this uh, very sudden temporary restraining order came in, you know, mid morning this morning. And it's, there's a, there's a twisted joy that I have in the temporary restraining order. I don't know what's going to happen when this thing actually goes before the judge on Wednesday, but the premise of it is not only that the, uh, that the graves surrounding the statue might be damaged, but that the department of defense and the department of the army didn't go through and formulate the environmental impact study correctly <laughs> under the law. That's amazing. And how often, how often have we had cases uh, where somebody's tried to do something amazing and the left wing wackos come in and they file some sort of environmental lawsuit. And then we spend years spending millions and millions yes. of dollars trying to combat, you know, save a snail. That's right. Going to cross the the, the Scottish monk lizard was once seen here. That's right. So the, I love the fact that this is where we are with this judge. And I also I was listening to, to your uh, last segment, the last half hour. I, I also have enjoyed uh, reading today and listening uh, to the liberal press talk about how this is a Trump judge. You know what else is interesting about this judge? He's an African-American. Yes. And I mean, I, to me, that's not it does not matter to me. I'm not obsessed with these types of things. But, you know, the left is totally obsessed with race. And I do think, given the subject matter here, it is interesting that a black judge, OK, if he's a Trump judge, has stepped in to make sure that all the, the, the rules so, are followed, that the law is followed to to, you know, the nth degree. I now, think that's important to note. That detail, though, John, is not something you're going to find in almost any news coverage. They're not mentioning the race of the judge today. Now, if it were if right. if he had come up with a different decision, if he had said, no, 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 this monument needs to be taken down, it should have instead it should have been taken down last week. But now do it right now. They would be emphasizing his race today in the coverage. But in fact, they don't yes. actually tell you the race of the judge now. Yeah, I, I mean, this is the kind of deceitful coverage that we get on just about every issue. It, this this is one that I'm intimately familiar with, but it does make you second guess everything. Of course. Uh, you hear, of course, conservatives have gotten to the point where we have to second guess everything and do our own research to see, hey, are we getting the whole story here? But, I, you know, the bigger the bigger issue is whether this is the kind of destruction and in this case, desecration that we as a culture and a society uh, should accept going forward. I don't know what's going to happen in with the minutia and the nuance of the law, environmental law, but as a culture. You know, I, in 2020, all we heard was everything that had anything to do with the Confederacy should be taken down. It should be put in libraries, in um, in museums, on battlefields, and guess where else? In cemeteries. And here you have this really magnificent piece of artwork. And I know the people who hate the Confederacy are going to hate the Confederacy, and that's fine. I'm not really here to defend the Confederacy, but. If we have artwork in a cemetery and they're actually dead men who've been dead for over 160 years buried next to it, I thought this was the kind of thing that so, was appropriate, that we were going to protect, and apparently not. And, and, and one of the many things that's missing from this story are, is all of the context of how this monument even came to be, why it's there in the first place. So it's not 
I, I almost think as I, I read more and more about it, and you and you know the details here, but it, it seems wrong to call it the Confederate monument. It it is, I think, much more so a reconciliation monument because that was the purpose of its construction in the first place. William McKinley uh, moved on all of this uh, in 1900, and he's a Republican president who would be he would later become assassinated. Uh, Confederates opposed the construction of a reconciliation monument there at this at this location in Arlington. They didn't even want it. Uh, and in some sense, so Joe Biden is finishing the work that Confederates uh, had had started, which is to stop this thing from being there in the first place. And it is representative of of our history. We had Confederate soldiers fighting alongside Union soldiers in the Spanish-American War uh, and coming out of that experience, these states. Uh, had said, man, we need to we need to close the chapter on the division between us and come together as a country. Now the Biden administration wants to tear all of that down. Yeah, it's it's really nefarious. It's very harmful to the unity that I would hope that all of us would like to strive. I mean, do we really want to rip open the wounds of the Civil War in 2023, or is it wise for us to avoid what? kind of feels to me like an oncoming conflict of some kind. God forbid it's a full-blown civil war, but an oncoming violent conflict by studying what led the people of this country in 1861 to enter into this violence. I think that's worth studying, and I think we're doing a lot of damage to ourselves by stripping all of these things away. Also, as, as you know, I, I began the show today talking about how much distance it does feel like we have from the left right now. Like it does feel like so many of these issues are irreconcilable. But imagine what it must have felt like in the mid to late 1800s and where you're where you're dealing with what it what really was. You know, people were dying due to these what appeared to be irre- irreconcilable differences. And the country does end up coming together. And it's a mess. It really is. But if you look back at a reconciliation monument and you look back the, at the effort to try and stitch it up and try and get get the country together and flying under the same flag in that process, you do find some optimism that it is possible to forge ahead into the future. But, boy, the left is really working to erase the possibility of reconciliation at all, aren't they? It almost makes you think that they want to lead us into a conflict. I, I God, I. I I have so much anxiety about next year, put all these statues from the past uh, aside. I've really got a lot of of fear uh, that people are pushing buttons, trying to taunt and lead certain segments of our population into conflict. I mean, it's a sick thing to say. I never thought I'd be saying it. And, you know, I worked up in the Senate. I've lived in Arlington. I lived all over the country. I, I am not optimistic about the future at the moment. We've got to figure out a way to move forward and and destroying our artistic and cultural heritage and and uh, taunting half the country doesn't seem like a good plan. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and and I mean, just look at the events of January 6. January 6 is a perfect example of what you're talking about. They their view is that if they can make a claim that their political opponents are, quote, insurrectionists, that they can use that as a means to consolidate power and remove their political opponents entirely from the conversation. That's exactly what they're doing. And there are eerie parallels. If you actually take the time to do more than just read the Wikipedia page about the civil war uh, to what was happening back then and what's happening now. And I think responsible leaders have to grow a spine and stand up and say, no, this is not the direction we want to go. We're, we're taking uh, a, a, a generation that could be a huge period of time of shared prosperity and collective peace, and we're throwing it away. Why? Because we want to sanitize our society about something that happened over a century and a half ago? That's really stupid. That's not smart public policy. It's not, uh, it's not wisdom on display. In yeah. fact, it's it appears to be very devious, I think. Also, there's nothing – there's no, like, consistency to this plan either. They they, they try and, uh, like, erase all of these signs of the Democrat Party's uh, history of racial prejudice and segregation. But then they, like – you know, then they leave the Woodrow Wilson Bridge intact. Like, have you noticed they haven't changed the name? Like, it's <laughs> like you, – you still have to drive over. It's like – and every time I'm, I'm, I'm either on, on a boat going under it or on a car going over it, I'm always like, hey, there's the most racist bridge in America. You got it. Uh, Look, if we want to go through all of the leaders of the United States from day one to today, 
we can find things that are negative. You know, Vince, I showed up at Arlington Cemetery yesterday. I was in, I was laying in bed debating whether I go to church for Advent <laughs> yesterday, and I thought I better drive up to Arlington and just see what's going on. So I drove the two hours up to Arlington Cemetery. It wasn't packed. Everybody had put the reeds down yeah, for yeah. reeds across America the day before. And the one guy who was at the memorial, the reconciliation monument yesterday, is um, a black guy, an older black man wearing an Army veteran hat. And I didn't know, you know, I, I wasn't looking to get into a big conversation. He came up to me and said, are you here to see this before it's torn down? And I said, yeah. And he said, can you believe they're doing this to our veterans? They're coming for me next. They're coming for my guys next. And I don't know where, you know, what era he was a veteran of. I would, I would guess he was in the 70s or 80s, I think. But, you know, it has to be terrifying. If you're actually watching this, it has to be terrifying to be a vet and think that today they're going after the Confederate veterans. But these leftists may well decide that World War II was not a noble cause. I mean, that seems crazy to suggest, but I think it would have been crazy 10 years ago well, I mean, to it say was, that they would tear this down. And, 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 you know, and judging the the members of the military for the decisions of our leaders has always been a grave sin because uh, you, you do have, like, for instance, Vietnam. The, the left spit all over Vietnam veterans yes. as they came back. So it's not – I mean, we have we have plenty of evidence from recent history and, and, and gave troops – you know, remember you had people showing up. What was that Westboro Baptist Church? That ridiculous organization that would show up, show up at the funerals of our fallen troops in, in the wars in right. Afghanistan and Iraq, and and treat them like utter garbage. This has been a through line on the American left for a long time, unfortunately. Uh, but but that that gentleman, that veteran, is right. There's a target on his back too. There's a reason to stop this type of behavior. I mean, I think we can argue legitimately, whether the beautiful, in my eyes, equestrian statue of Robert E. Lee that was on Monument Avenue in Richmond should be on display in public. Now, I'm a preservationist. So to me, even if you, for some reason, hate Robert E. Lee, you know, you never read anything about him and you just decided you hate him, I still think that statue should have stayed up. But that was in public on a main street in the capital city of Richmond. Mm -hmm. It does tell the story of Richmond. I would argue that those things should still be up, but they destroyed Monument Avenue. Okay, I can handle that if people voted uh, to make that judgment. But to go into a cemetery, a veteran cemetery, and start saying these things are not worthy of you seeing them in the modern era because they are depicting characters of a different era in ways that upset us today. I mean, how obtuse and and foolish can we be in the modern era? Arrogant. How arrogant can we be in the modern era to behave that way? We should we should look at these things with curiosity of instead course. of condemnation. Well, also, you know, one of the most annoying things about this is how ahistoric the conversations are around each of these monuments and memorials. Like, so if the conversations were nuanced and interesting and, and deep and actually worth, like provoked worthy debate, that'd be one thing. You know, I, one of the things that I, has always stood out to me is there's a massive difference, I think, between markers of the Confederacy from the mid-1800s to things that were assembled in, say, the 1960s as an express opposition to integration, for instance. I, I think that is worthwhile to have a conversation about the nature and the difference between those things. Uh, you know, like in Virginia, there were a bunch of high schools, for instance, named in the 1960s, basically as a middle finger to people who were uh, trying to see integration take place. But th having that, having said that, there's like, you know, look at what happened here in Washington, D.C. We have the Freedmen's Memorial depicting a slave getting out of his shackles and rising to his feet with Abraham Lincoln uh, standing above him. And and at that dedication was Frederick Douglass, who was there for the dedication. And the left wanted to tear it down. They they said it was a, a horrific display. And like, wait a second, Frederick Douglass was at the dedication. It represents a guy who's rising, not lowering himself in servitude. Right. And they don't know anything. They don't, they're not bothering themselves with the debate. They just take a two-dimensional approach and then tear it down. Yeah, so every leftist suddenly gets to become the art critic who is the jury of whether something in 2023 is appropriate. I, you know, I, I, I just don't understand this mindset from the same people who told us that we should all sit back and be silent and use taxpayer money to pay for modern artwork like Piss Christ, you know, where the crucifix is dropped in a, in a, 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 a cup of, of urine. urine. Yeah. That, 
That we have to accept. Oh, my God, you're not allowed to be critical, and you certainly can't withdraw public funds for these things. You must understand that the artist has a right to express themselves any way they want to. These are the same people who've done that to us for the last 30 years, but then they want to come through and vanquish the art of previously uh, renowned artists. And, you know, there's a sick twist to this that Moses Ezekiel, who completed the work in Arlington Cemetery, was a Jewish artist and a Confederate soldier. I mean, imagine what the federal government and President McKinley must have been thinking to find a Jewish artist who weren't awarded many major con uh, uh, contracts at the time. They weren't given these opportunities. Find this guy, give him this opportunity, and now all these years later, especially at this moment in our history, we're going to stomp literally on his grave because he's buried right there at the, uh, at the edge of this, of this particular statue, yes. his grand, grandest piece of work. There's a sick... There's something sick going on here. We should stand up against it. So, uh, last question for you, and John Reed, thank you for your time today on this issue. Uh, because of course, you, yeah. Uh, so, so how close are we to this same movement literally exhuming the bodies of the Confederate soldiers who are buried there at Arlington? I think that's a very legitimate question that wouldn't have been asked 10 years ago. But if, if you're going to question whether this should be, uh, this statue should be there, then it seems to me that the next leading question should be, well, why are these quote unquote traitors to America? When people say that, of course, it's an obtuse lack of understanding of how the Civil War came about. But OK, uh, why are they buried here? And I it seems inconceivable to me that a society that has always respected the dead, the whole rest in peace concept a civilized idea that you don't disturb dead people in their graves, that these people may decide to go for that next. And that's another reason why I'm, I'm thankful today there have been some Republican leaders in Virginia. And as you mentioned uh, in your last half hour, there were 44 members of Congress who signed a brief saying that this should not happen. There need to be leaders who say, I'm not going to refight the Civil War but I am going to stand for civilization in our modern era. We're going to stop this. We've got to stop uh, destroying things. And, we've, and, and certainly when it comes to cemeteries, we can't disturb the dead. That's, wow. a, that's a pretty basic uh, premise of our society, I think. Yeah, and this whole thing is about not starting a civil war, but healing in the wake of it. That's the, that's the whole point. Um, okay, hey, thank you. John Reed for your time today. Really appreciate all of that. Good to talk to you, sir.